Hello, I have a cold. Yes, it's true. The cure How for the common you? cold. I woke up. Let's get through the material quickly and concisely. We'll get to the cures shortly, but we first must acknowledge the causes. Unconscious breathing. Everyone knows this, that we get sick when we're stressed out, but there are legitimate studies that validate this and point to the specific mechanisms of causation. Stress and anxiety cause shallow breathing. Shallow breathing creates hypoxia, or lack of oxygen. And hypoxia results in cortisol, the stress hormone, and inflammation, dis-ease. Shallow breathing, stress hypoxia, is the cause. So the cure is conscious breathing, oxygenated breathing, in through the nose, out through the mouth. But the important part is the nose inhalation, in through the nose. Why through the nose? Now let's be clear. Breathing through the nose is the superior way to breathe, both for life and for singing. We're not supposed to breathe through our mouths. Our mouths are meant for food and liquid. Our noses are for cleaning the air that we breathe. You wouldn't want to try to eat or drink through your nose, and in the same way, you don't want to breathe through our mouths. Mouth breathing can lead to health problems and respiratory issues. If you look in your own face, the nostrils are actually pretty small compared to the mouth. And you would think, why do I have such small nostrils, although I want to breathe a lot of air? This is because inside the nose there are structures that are very important to prepare the air. And the, nose comes, the air comes from beneath the nose. In that very moment, when the air goes into the nose, our brain knows the speed, the temperature, the humidity, the composition and content and of the air. And reacts immediately by uh, forming these structures in a way that either more or less air can pass through, that the air gets heated up or cooled down to 37 degrees Celsius, and that we get from our sinuses which are surrounding the nose, uh, the humidity to have up to 100% humidity in the air. That means the air should be loaded with a lot of water. Only through this water, only through this humidity, we can extract the oxygen from the air. In our lung, the red blood cells can only extract ox oxygen through water. So that's why Patrick we need McKeown that humidity. Patrick explains that if we breathe a lower volume of air by breathing in a slow, controlled fashion through the nose, we increase the amount of carbon dioxide inside us and can deliver more oxygen to our muscles and organs, including the heart and the brain. Mouth breathing means difficult breathing, and this in turn means deficient oxygenation of the tissues, with a resultant lowering of vital activities generally and of the activity of the brain in particular. George Catlin, author of the 1869 book Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life, stresses the importance of breathing through the nose at all times, while awake or sleeping. He says, There is no perfect sleep for man or brute with the mouth open. It is unnatural and a strain upon the lungs. Remember, it's about oxygen and consciousness. The body is not going haywire when it produces mucus congestion. It's not dumb. The body is intelligent, and the symptom that it produces is the cure. Mucus makes us cough, sneeze, wheeze, and sniffle. It makes us become conscious of nose breathing. You can also use a couple of techniques that I'll link below in the show notes, which promotes conscious breathing, clears congestion naturally through comfortable nose breathing. Now, what not to do? It's often more important than what to do. Minimize speech, because we breathe through the mouth when we talk. That's why talking is exhausting. Silence promotes healing. Holding the breath just for a second, saying fuck it to yourself in your mind, and then exhaling and letting go of all the shit that bothers you. Do not take a decongestant. Counterproductive. You'll clog up all the toxins, irritants, and pathogens that the mucus is trying to expel and trade short-term symptom relief 
for a longer-term cold, and a possibly a more severe cold. And decongestants are often addictive. There are people who become so addicted to inhaled nasal decongestant sprays that their nasal tissues become like saturated sponges. And they'll spray hourly to try and decongest themselves. And the medicine no longer works for them. We can get them off, but you shouldn't get started in the first place. You don't want to get addicted to nasal decongestant sprays. Do not blow your nose. It can make a cold worse. You have to teach a child to blow his nose. It does not come innately in so far as it is unnatural. Unnatural diet. Historically, humans, like most mammals, lose weight during the lean winter months. Not now. We eat gluttonously, luxuriously in an ever warmer indoor environment through the winter, and we gain weight. This is out of balance with our natural digestive rhythms. Refined white sugar, an artificial man made chemical, is also offensive to immunity. Counterintuitively, ice cream consumption increases in the winter, and studies show back in 1940 that an increase in ice cream consumption were associated with paralytic polio cases. Sadler's study validated the link between immune suppression and sugar ice cream. In late fall and winter, physical exercise tends to decline, and sugar consumption and caloric consumption rises during the holidays. Is it any wonder that it's the cold and flu season? Again, look to the symptoms for the cure. During a cold, we lose our appetite. Food is unappealing. If we listened, we would naturally fast or eat minimally. Typically, Western society does not. Interestingly, there is research to support the idea that the lack of appetite you feel during the first few days of an illness is your body's natural adaptation to fighting the infection. Let's look at a few of them. Remember this study? Sugar decreases immunity by 50%, but we get a 50% increase in immunity simply by fasting. This is in harmony with natural and holistic principles, and in my experience, fasting does greatly accelerate the healing from colds. In fact, Researchers at Yale School of Medicine observed that two days of fasting resulted in reduced inflammatory response. Oxygen. Intermittent fasting prevents disease by limiting oxidative stress and inflammation. Abstaining from eating limits the supply of nutrients like iron and zinc that the infecting agents need to grow and spread. Mice that were force-fed were less likely to survive compared to mice allowed to eat according to appetite. I know it's winter, but let me suggest, don't be one of those force-fed mice. Recent research on mice and humans showed that fasting for 48 to 72 hours recycled damaged immune cells and regenerated healthy ones. And there are so many other benefits. Type 2 diabetes, fasting has positive effects on insulin resistance and blood sugar levels. Brain health. Animal and human studies suggest that fasting protects against neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's disease. Cancer. Short periods of fasting protect cancer patients against chemotherapy damage and increase treatment effectiveness. The evidence is clear. We can fast to prevent colds or heal more quickly from them when they occur. Fasting is natural, scientifically, extremely beneficial on many fronts, and it's what your body wants you to do, which is why all of the major religions promote fasting regimens. The meal, I'm sad. I'm licking every little last crumb off the plate because I don't want this to end. And right there, we discover the longing for something infinite. We want the feast never to end. Why then does the church ask us to fast, especially during Lent? Best benefit is if you do the fasting, not for the physical aspect only, for the, for the spiritual aspect, you will going to burn a lot of karmas. 
then you burn a lot of karma. From my clinical and personal experience, I recommend a hot water fast, drinking hot water only for 24 to 48 hours. Ayurveda, whose origins have been dated to prehistoric times, proposes that hot water dissolves ama, the sticky internal substance that causes disease. But basically it's like old, heavy, sticky, often acidic mucus. It's really thick and stringy and tacky. Yeah? It's stick to the wall kind of mucus. It's really gross. And it's often discolored as well. It's got a yellowy or a greeny or a brownish kind of yeah, stain to it. This waste in Ayurveda is called Ama. Ama is derived from two words. A, which means near or towards. And Ma, which means poison. Ama means an entity existing in a state of incomplete transformation. Ama is considered a physical toxin, but its presence also affects the mental and spiritual quotient by corrupting the doshas. Hot water purifies and strengthens and detoxes the gastrointestinal tract, and it dissolves Ama from your system, just as it dissolves grease from dirty dishes. In summary, with a common cold, it is counterproductive to seek more. To believe the body is stupid. Place misguided faith in magic healing chemicals. No potions, no pills, tonics, or teas. It's quite the opposite. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Conscious, nose breathing, fasting, hot water, and tuning into the body is best. Hello, I have a cold. Yes, it's true. How are you? I woke up feeling odd, sniffling, sneezing. That's the lot.